Hi. Um, thank you for joining me. My name is Maxim. I am uh, um, an investor based in New Zealand. I'm not a very accountant. And today I'm going to show you two methods how to do evaluation of a New Zealand listed company. And today we're going to talk about uh, ZEL, that's Z Energy. I'll show you two methods and I will explain my thought process, how um, to avoid common mistakes and hopefully that will help you to make the right decisions and increase your dividends and assets. Uh, feel free to type your comments uh, during this live talk. I'm sure some of the people will be able to answer some of them while I'm doing the webinar and um, I'll talk for about 20 to 30 minutes and at the end I will pick some of the interesting questions and we'll answer them. All right, so we will talk about an intrinsic value of a company, of a stock. And an intrinsic value, that's how much a rational investor is likely to pay um, for a company based on fundamentals and other factors. And it's very um, opinion based because even if you use the same formula, what you're seeing right now, um, by the way, if you've just joined us, um, joined me on uh, Facebook, you are not going to be able to see all my slideshows, but I will uh, later send you a link to the YouTube where you can uh, access all the formulas and um, I'll still be able to answer some of the questions on Facebook or YouTube live. Um, but I'll talk you through. So we're talking at the intrinsic value of Z Energy. And if you look at this uh, discounted cash flow uh, template, um, most of these assumptions are based on one of the popular investor advice. His name is um, Manish Prabhai. And uh, obviously you don't have to follow exact uh, numbers, but um, you can change your own. Um, so what he's saying that to create an intrinsic value of a stock, you have to um, have the following things. You have to come up with a projected growth rate of the company. Obviously, it's going to depend uh, on your personal opinion, on the history, on the future, on the market and fundamentals. And if you look at that energy that's um, currently trading at um, very low um, share price, um, around, I think it's uh, last time I checked, it was $2.93, $2.93 per share. And um, I believe in the next five years, it's going to grow at least 90%. And the reason I just came up with this number um, because I had a look at um, Simply Wall Street. That's one of the research companies based in Australia. They predict the future growth is going to be 85% over the next three years. Um, obviously, that's their assumption. I don't know if it's going to be right or not. Nobody knows. Um, I don't think it's an annual, a forecast annual. I don't think it's going to grow uh, by that much per annual. Um, but to be safe, I've entered 19% uh, per year, which is above the uh, New Zealand stock exchange uh, and the tax 15 uh, fund. Uh, on average, it grew by about 10 to 15 percent per year so I've entered above the average because it is gonna grow from the low level the current share price I don't think it's I think it's the lowest over the last uh, five years 
and um, so if it's gonna grow it should grow faster than average and then past five years six to ten years I think it's gonna grow roughly nine percent just my assumption uh, discounted rate ten percent um, Manish Prabhai suggests suggests ten percent and what does it mean discounted rate that means how much um, what, what return on investment you want over the period um, of 10 years for example and you can enter any number 10 15 percent but the more you enter the uh, bigger the current discount has to be of the uh, of the stock to achieve that so 10 percent is what is suggested by uh, he's one of uh, the most successful investors so i'm gonna follow him uh, let me just bring up my screen next uh we're gonna talk about the terminal value uh, that's the multiple of the free cash flow what that means is um how much we can sell the business for at the end of 10 years and uh, he suggests pick a number um, between 10 and 15 10 means a low quality business and 15 high quality business uh, which means high quality you can sell, sell it for high multiple lower quality business sells for local <laughs> multiple number so we're talking about Z and Z energy I believe it's middle of the pack so I just entered 13 next input is gonna be the first year free cash flow which is gonna go here and to find out basically you have to look either at Yahoo Finance sometimes uh, it does display that uh, or some other research companies uh, for example Morningstar they say it's 57 million over the last uh, year that's a financial year if you can't find the number you basically have to look at the um, annual report and see the operating cash flow which was 150 59 million and then you deduct the capital expenditure and you get the free cash flow which is 57 million all right so next is um 10 year period so the first start is 57 million and then uh, obviously there is a formula if you are interested uh, please type in the comments below if you want uh, more um, of that kind of information I appreciate if you hit the like button follow my page because I will do uh, live webinars um, on a weekly basis uh, give you some useful tips you can apply today to grow your assets and dividends and if you want to get a copy of this um, discounted cash flow template, um, just write it down and I'll send you a link. As you can see, over the first five, five years, it grows by 90% and then a slower growth rate at 9%. Next column means uh, present value. It's a very fancy formula. Basically, how much the money will worth in the future take into account this discount rate. So, as you can see, it's gonna grow for the first five years and then it's gonna go down because the first five years is over 10% and then the next five years is below 10% so that's why you're gonna lose money in the future um, over the next five years all right and then if you add up all this figure oh that, that's the yellow that's the um, terminal whale so how much 
um, it's going to be valued multiple 13 in 10 years and the present value for future cash flows that's in millions so that's basically 1.5 billion and intrinsic value you have to add current cash that the company has available which is 19 million and you can find it uh, on the statistics on yahoo finance uh, where was it total cash 19 million so you get based on this input based on my um, numbers intrinsic market value is 1.5 billion and how do you think how much do you think what's the current market value of z energy you can also find it on yahoo finance that's uh, just under 1.5 billion so we are based on current share price according to my figures it is nearly at the intrinsic value so that's a fair value to me or to you uh, you can change the numbers um, the reason also I'll give you another tip if you can't find what should be a growth rate of a company because how would you know what's a growth rate of a freight company or some retail chain or uh, property commercial property company it's very really hard unless you work in the industry and what I did, I uh, looked up previous cash flows um, over the last uh, six years and on average per annum they had 116 million. So I basically manipulated the growth rate to achieve the same average uh, if you see here that's going to be the same average 160 million so are based past on the future which is they say don't believe it's going to be the same in the future but um, for the argument's sake I use these figures to achieve this intrinsic value and so according to this intrinsic value uh, Z energy is trading near there and it's up to you to decide whether you want to participate or not um, another so that's intrinsic value right uh, by the way if you've got any questions feel free to type now and uh, we've got some very knowledgeable uh, investors uh, watching the live webinar so they'll be able to answer that while i'm doing the talk and then i will um, jump in and answer the questions so that's um, intrinsic value based on market cap I actually took this template from uh, one of the New Zealand youtubers investing with Tom he is um, quite knowledgeable and I recommend you to have a look at his channel another popular template is is called margin of safety um, I copied that from Phil Town. He's a very famous investor as well. He's got multiple books. And I'll explain you as well, step by step. You can, uh, if you want, just type in the comments below if you want to get a copy of this template as well. I'll link it up. All right, so let's start. So we're talking about the same company, Z Energy and the inputs the first input estimated earnings per share growth rate per year um, it took me a while to figure out how much and i did the same i copied the history i used the previous uh, earnings per share for the previous years and uh, I, I got an average of uh, 39 cents Nine cents. That's 
and in per share and the growth rate I also copied from uh, simply Wall Street I based it on the past on the previous performance and in the past um, they had an annual growth rate of 10% so this is what I got for my formula 10% so that's the current share price $2.90 all right so we start um, as the starting year and it's per share 39 cents um, at the moment it's negative because they lost but you can't um, start with negative so I just took an average over the last five years and then obviously growth by 10% which is I, don't, I think it's conservative based on, on the fact that uh, they all start from the very bottom and population grows in New Zealand uh, yes I know we are unlikely to have a lot of flights a lot of travelers but um, I'll actually show you something that's the recent data from uh, Stats New Zealand and it shows you the current consumption of fuel uh, that's supplied by Z Energy. So before the lockdown, we had nearly 40 million liters and they break it down for you. And now, last week, we are nearly back to normal if you can say so so there i think that it's um the consumption is i would say 35 million so it's what 15 percent less before the lockdown which is not too bad yes they've lost a lot of uh, that's not one of their main sources they get of income they get a lot of money from jet fuel and retail as well and um based on the annual report data they're saying that their uh, jet fuel sales are gonna be very low. At the moment, even the government is saying that uh, there are not enough flights. Uh, the government is subsidizing the flights. There are no, obviously, uh, travelers coming in or out, coming in or coming out. So they are um, subsidizing the freight flights. They've added 56 flights, and currently we have um because i'm in the freight industry myself i work there there are about 60 weekly flights international flights plus domestic flights 60 weekly flights to and from new zealand and pre-lockdown we used to have 600 so at the moment we are enjoying only 50 percent of normality so it's a big drop of um, income for them and it's unlikely to recover for the next in my personal opinion for the next well there were a lot of reports um, by international organizations that international flights are not going to recover for the next three to five years um, and yeah so then they will receive uh, less cash flow than in the past so coming back to this uh, margin of safety 10 percent that's i believe a conservative growth earnings for earnings per share and the next input is the price to earnings uh, obviously i used the previous five years again because at the moment it's zero it's negative they lost money so in the, the, the average for the past four years 13 price to earning number all right so that's the average and the next step for
for you is to work out what is the future in 10 years share price and you basically multiply the 10 year earnings per share by the average multiple of this company for this particular industry um, that's what you believe in it's going to be in, in the future and you get uh, 13 dollars and 37 cents that's how much hopefully if everything goes well for that energy how much the share price is going to be in 10 years and then because i want 15 percent based on margin of safety that's recommended 50 percent return on investment in um, over this period then you reverse engineer how much the share price should be valued today in 2020 based on the future 10 years and you um, go back basically um, deduct this 15 percent 10 times and you get um, basically divided by four and I'm gonna show you here. So if you go from year one to year 10, you get $4. So that's four, basically. Uh, that's 15%, you add it up, and at the end you get four. So all you have to do is divide the, the share price in the future, which is $13 roughly, divided by four, and you get $3.30. All right. And the next step is your margin of safety. That once again, it's going to be based on your uh, belief. Uh, Charlie Manga and Warren Buffett, they say the margin of safety should be 50%. Well, you probably have to wait a very long time if you uh, will look for a company. Maybe every 10 years, yes, you'll get... Uh, a company on sale 50% like we had a lot of retirement villages went down by 50% a lot of tech companies went down by 50% but in my case I just made for example 10 year because it's already it's already been down by 15% 15 50 from its high like last year the share price or well, not last year but uh, at the beginning of this year the share price was trading um, we can look it up um, share price was trading what five dollars six dollars so it's already discounted by by 50 percent and it's going to be naive to expect another 50 percent discount well never say never but i believe it's already at the very bottom of what it is of based on the network based on uh, the brand based on other fundamentals I believe it's not going to go down by another 50%. So I don't think you should apply the 50% discount margin. You want a bit of some kind of margin of safety. So I've, added, I've used 10% and I achieved the current share price based on all these inputs. For example, if you, uh, if you change it, earnings per share, instead of 10%, if you say, Oh, it's going to grow 15%, right? So your margin of safety, your share price, the future share price is going to be $20. Then the reverse engineer, $5. And margin of safety, 10%, that's $4, right? $4.64. So it's already more than um, cons conservative margin of safety and conservative EPS and its per share growth. And it actually may be the fact that I'm very conservative because if you look at other um, researching companies like Morningstar, they believe the value, the fair value of this company now is six dollars eighty five cents. Um, they've got, I'm sure they've got their own facts, they've got their own resources to, um, and they're very smart people. Uh, but I don't believe it is valid at current. Uh, market condition at what's happening in the world and actually uh, there is another competition big competitor which is going to disrupt uh, the fuel market not only the government is planning to implement a law uh, regulate the uh, fuel supply companies 
So it's going to be very low margin business in the future, most likely. But also, if you look at these recent um, articles online in New Zealand Herald, one of the, the second largest uh, retailer, Costco, Costco, is going to be in New Zealand, in Westgate. And they are planning a discount. They're going to build their own petrol stations. Can you believe it or not? Well, I can because pack and save. They've got their own petrol stations uh, somewhere in Auckland. I don't know what's the pricing. Actually, please comment below. Is pack and save feel cheaper than, say, I don't know, Z or any other petrol station? But Costco is going to build their own petrol stations. And if you're going to be one of their VIP clients, they will sell it for 20 or 30 percent cheaper and if it is 20 or 30 percent cheaper i would probably and maybe other people visit their friends in uh, west auckland and at the same time uh, get their fuel uh, and if you do if you've got a big family that's a big discount so there is, there, there's going to be a, a lot of pr pressure on Z and other uh, petrol stations to compete um, if you enjoyed this kind of information so far, I appreciate you if you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to my page and follow me on YouTube and Facebook. I spent a lot of time uh, finding interesting facts um, for you and I hope you appreciate it and I enjoy doing it. Some other things that you should consider uh, it's called the mode and there are six different types of modes that um, most investors can see to um, consider to evaluate a company. The first one is called the brand. How, um, how much trust does it command? For example, if you compare Coke or Pepsi, um, most people will um, buy Coca-Cola uh, instead of Pepsi. And in my opinion, Z um, does a lot of um, social campaigns um, because it's even in their brand Z is for energy, um, which which I like. So among their competitors, personally, I believe they've got a bigger and wider mode. Uh, but at the same time, they are. Um, trading during the climate change and all, all, a lot of people will uh, transition to electric cars and Z knows about it. They are, are doing some partnerships with uh, companies to, um, yeah, to enter this market. So they are not stagnating. Uh, I follow this um, CEO, Mike Bennett, and they are always trying to stay ahead. They're, they're trying to disrupt themselves. They have partnerships with uh, vehicle sharing companies, um, or probably for obvious reasons, they want to supply fuel for them, I think, and maybe they own part of their companies, because that's the future. If you look at what's happening in the world, people will unlikely to own cars, as many cars as today, they most likely will just share them like Uber. Uh, the next mode is uh, how easy it is to switch. For example, um, if you got all your Apple products, iPhones and all your family, it's going to be very hard for you to switch to Android even if it's cheaper. It has to be a lot more better and cheaper for you to even consider switching from Android to iPhone and vice versa, if you've got everything already set up for you. Um, and th th this helps a lot with any company. And if you get together with a friend or some other investor friends and you write down these things on a spreadsheet or somewhere and then you discuss it, uh, it's going to help you a lot to avoid mistakes. Uh, network effect. Facebook and other networks. Um, I don't think that energy has any network effect uh, other than their location uh, of petrol stations. How? But it's not about the location. It's about uh, once you've entered 
the system, how easy it is for you to, to stay in the system, what are the benefits. But at the moment, I don't see any benefits being in the network of that because if, if I really need the petrol, I'll just go to you know, mobile or any other petrol station. It's, uh, I, I don't really care how many stations they have. Um, Tall Bridge, basically a uh, monopoly. Well, they are, there are not many parallel stations, so they I think one of the three biggest ones, or one of the four biggest ones, so that they don't have a monopoly. Uh, secrets, I, I don't see any. Do, do you see any secrets in uh, Z petrol stations? Uh, well, in, in saying that, they've got, uh, they started, developed some smart technology, um, which I don't use personally myself, but some of my friends do. They've got uh, smart cameras which can read your number plate and you don't even have to go and pay for the petrol. Um, I think it's just gonna send you a bill or just um, debit your credit card, deduct it from credit card. So I, I like the innovation. I see that they are doing something to improve their business and but at the same time, if you don't agree with that kind of um, waste of money, uh, type in the comments below what do you think they should be doing. How can they um, overcome all these challenges? Because it's not going to be easy for them with all the government regulations, all the competition and um, low fuel consumption. They have to come up with something very interesting. Price advantage. Uh, they are not the cheapest. Yeah, so in my opinion, their mode is is very weak at the moment. So they mostly compete on price and some specials. All right, so that's uh, in the nutshell. Um, I've showed you two formulas, two templates, how to work out an intrinsic value of Z energy. The first one is based on market cap and the second is based on margin safety margin of safety and is there anything else i should remind you oh yeah there is another website thinkbox which you which you can use as well uh, seven free days and it tells you um, some fundamentals and based on their fair value it's it should be $2.84. So it is nearly close to um, my uh, valuation of $2.97 and it is close to what it is currently trading. But in my opinion, there are a lot more stocks, uh, a lot more interesting companies that will grow faster. All right. Thank you for your attention. Now I'm going to answer some of your questions. If you enjoyed it, I appreciate if you hit the like button and uh, make sure you subscribe. Follow my YouTube channel and um, page on Facebook. Next week, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some other tips how you can grow your dividends and assets. I'm just going to go through the questions. Uh, There is a question uh, about the TY point closure. Do I think that energy will grow as much as, you, as I have predicted? To be frank, I have no idea how that will affect that energy. Maybe you can uh, shed some light in the comments. Uh, Eugene would like to get a copy of the spreadsheet. Yep, I will uh, add a link later. Olivia, yep, Olivia will do. Yep, yep, that's easy. Ben is asking, what are the average amount of companies people invest in? 
are you talking about how big should be your portfolio to invest in? Well, it should be diversified and you should invest in different companies, different industries, uh, different countries, different stock exchanges. See if there was there any questions on Facebook? What do you think about that energy? Are you gonna invest in this company? Is it a good one to invest in? Do you think it's gonna grow in the next five years? Thank you for your time. Um, if you've got any other questions, uh, feel free to type them now and I will answer them later. Enjoy the rest of the day.